I've been paying low pixel stuff for so long. I don't have my uh, default. So a question. Uh, do you Go have any uh, to improve brushwork? Uh, exercises or techniques, what I oh, can yeah. just practice and become better. <laughs> yeah, of course, actually, I do. So one of the things that you can do is this thing where I was talking to a friend of mine because he was talking about his Wacom and he was just like, yeah, you know, I can't get it to to paint the way that I like. And I was like, well, so at this point, Wacom devices have gotten so much better. I mean, there's even other tablets that have just come out that are even really good competition that I don't think it's the tool. I think it's you. And he was like, what? I was like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you should do this test of like, how likely can you push versus how hard you can push. And then just incrementally increase it and see if you can get it to like completely opaque, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's it's pretty challenging. You know? To have it like fall off like that. You see that? Mm -hmm. And so the way to to get better at that is is as you saw, you just do it. Okay. Um yeah. by just practicing pushing lightly, just lightly. Uh, another thing that you can do is practice drawing a painting without ever lifting your, your brush. Uh, like just never lift it. And then see how, how much you can get done. All right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then that's a pretty good challenge. Uh, something that's along those same lines is try to paint something with only 25 strokes. So you only have 25 strokes, including that you can just like not let go. So I'm gonna try to do one in 10. Let's see if I can do it in 10. I'll show you. So like this is all one stroke. So I'm gonna use this first stroke to, to build texture and silhouette. I don't think I can move the canvas. Should have zoomed out some more. So it's one. It's two. It's three. It's four. Five. Yes, Pat, you can ask a question next. <laughs> so he raised his hand. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. 10, 10 one is not the best, right? Mm -hmm. So you can see how that could be useful. Right? Obviously, you're not going to be in a situation where you only have like <laughs> 10 strokes. But the idea is that because you don't limit yourself while you're painting and practicing, you're, you're, you're creating a lot of variables that could be making your painting go wrong. Does that make sense? Like, let me, yes. <laughs> let me, let me, let me put it to you in a different way. So let's say that you're going to jump off this cliff and you're going to try to find the, the best, best way to do it with a hang glider, right? Should you run and jump or should you just walk off? Whatever, right? You know, you're trying to find the best technique to use the, the, mm -hmm. the hang glider. But 
you want to keep a lot of things the same. Like you want to keep the distance on the cliff the same. You want to keep like the sh the shoes you're wearing the same, the clothes you're wearing, the helmet, the material of the hang glider, the brand of the hang glider, you know, the, the type of wind conditions. So that way you can really just practice and focus in on the technique of your jump and run or running or walking or falling, you know, whatever the thing is. Because mm -hmm. if like, let's say the cliff is a little bit lower than normal or it's actually closer, maybe the wind today is a little faster. Like I said, you're wearing different shoes. Because there's, there's so many things that can go, that can challenge this. Do you understand? Yeah. And so when you, when you do these studies, the study is specifically in like these, these, these techniques to practice, they're doing that thing. They're doing that one thing, right? They're, they're challenging you in a very specific thing, you know? Um, but even then you can still make the mistake of like painting something like adding too many variables. Like if you're changing the subject matter all the time, right? You shouldn't do that either. You know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, those are a few techniques to get started. Thank you. Uh, but one thing that I would say is. Um, you should also just acquire more knowledge, just practice and learn more things. Mm -hmm. Now that one I figured. <laughs> yeah, that one's consistent, yeah. Okay. okay, thanks. Yeah, go ahead, Pat. What was your question? Oh, hey, sorry. I, <laughs> actually, I have to leave in one second. So I'm going to ask you questions and then watch the answer on the recording, if you don't mind. Um, yeah, go ahead. So I, one is really just like stupid and technical, but I see a lot of times when I'm like watching you paint and you have to like, uh, soften transitions between light and dark just round out a bevel you use your blur tool i think a lot or your smudge tool and uh -huh. whenever i use mine it just pushes the paint all around it never like just smooths out that edge so i was wondering if you have weird settings on yours or something it's stupid um, uh just, yeah i do have settings that are different and okay so if you go to the settings the brush settings and on the smudge you want to have scattering on at 30 percent uh -huh. you want to have transfer on with strength jitter on and pen pressure, and these are at zero percent. And then noise and smoothing's on, but I don't think that's important. Okay. And then wow. over here in the top left corner, you'll see the strength is at twenty six percent. It could be like twenty five or even thirty. I think okay. it's just I just haven't changed it to anything even like an even number. I normally do, but <laughs> um, you just gotta have some things. And oh yeah, and it also has to be like an airbrush. So if you look at it, soft. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. And that's cool. pretty much it. I just wanted to ask about, um, in terms of like the scale of detailing things. So like when I see, uh, if I watch you paint and stuff, when you start to add in like your cut lines or your little greeblies and stuff, I guess I find that I have trouble um, using the scale of those to like help me depict the scale of my figure or my robot or whatever. And then I often have times like thinking about my grouping on them. So like when I can have a bunch of them kind of clustered and when I can space them out more. So is there any any strategies for that kind of thing? Wait, so say that one more time. Uh, so understand. like cut lines and greeblies, little like doodads to make it look, you know, high tech or robotic or just details. It could be like engraving on medieval stuff. Um, but like figuring out sort of your scale so that it helps to like identify whether it's a great giant mech or like a little handheld robot and then figuring out like strategies for design in terms of like grouping those or spacing them out um so in one area doesn't seem like smothered or overdeveloped and other areas don't seem like uh, i don't know unconsidered comparatively and if you had any strategies for like kind of reconciling that so when it comes to detail and being able to scale it accurately you just need things in your your design that help us understand the scale overall so for instance, uh, if you're drawing a Mac and you want them to be like 300 stories tall, then drawing like bolts that are enormous is not going to feel like he's enormous, right? Because bolts aren't that big, they're very small. So drawing very big bolts on a character that's supposed to be large, then implies that there's a large, screwdriver that we screw inside that large mech you know 
Um, but another way of thinking about this is that you just use um, reference and and keep in mind the kinds of stuff that's in the reference, the scale. One thing that I generally tell people too, the smaller the detail, right? The smaller that you have in terms of detail in your design, the bigger it feels. And then the bigger the detail, the smaller it feels. Um, but I can talk more about it next class. I'll demonstrate it depending on um, would you submit? Not sure if you're still here, Pat, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, just ask this again during your assignment. I'll, I'll demonstrate more thoroughly, especially if it's an issue. Go for it, Jack. Okay, um, so this is concerning what you uh, had to say about my character that you talked about earlier on. Um, so obviously my perspective ellipses were completely off. And uh, okay, just after you finished, my first reaction was, okay, I'll try and draw a character by very quickly by taking into account uh, the different ellipses and trying to sort of give a better sense of perspective throughout the whole character. Um, is I wanted to ask if there's any other type of exercises that I could do other than just keep on doing that character again or in a different pose or from a different angle by any you, chance yeah you just need to practice your perspective and um so you have a better sense of perspective and so uh not necessarily drawing that character in different okay. poses just draw a character oh yeah yeah that's what i meant i mean i just draw a, draw a well, yeah like okay a naked man basically is, is what yeah I did. Uh, but even before that like it might be a bit, be good strategy to just practice drawing like some random like objects and oblong okay. shapes in perspective. Right. Okay. Like if you have a hard draw time drawing like a cube in perspective, um, you're going to have a hard time painting like a full pledged character. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the issue that I had here today is something that I've often had, but I don't realize it when I'm actually doing the character. Yeah, of so, course you don't, right? That's just because if you did, then nothing. you wouldn't make those mistakes. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so, so, so the here, here's a here's a here's a better lesson to be to made made from what I was trying to explain to you. Okay. okay. Um, and it's kind of of very similar to what I was talking to Brittany about. Okay. Just always assume that you suck. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Like. Like it's better to just to like not if you don't know like how good you are at something like if you just don't know, then just default that you suck. Okay. Okay. Yep. And when you do that, then that opens the door to to um, more ability. There's like this new study came out it was like the Dune, the Dun, the Dunning effect or the Dunrig effect. Have you seen this? It's like this chart that's been going around. It's like this mm -hmm. meme now. Nope. It's basically like, I forget exactly what it is, the name of the guy. There's, there's two people that did it. But um, like you have a chart, right? And we all love charts. And on one side of the chart is confidence. <clears throat> and then the other uh, side of the chart is expertise. Okay? So okay. depending on your expertise and your uh, and like depending on your expertise depends on how much confidence you have. The Dunning effect, the Dune rig, the Dunning, I think it's the Dunning. Anyways, it's like this, and it's like that, and it's like that. Okay? So in okay. the beginning, people generally are super confident, so, which is ironic, right? Because they're terrible. Because mm. this is the least experience that they could have you know mm -hmm. and and then so but there comes a point where like that confidence hits the peak and they realize wait a minute i'm like terrible and then they go through this this stage of like huge doubts and self-deprecating feelings and yeah. like, oh I my had, gosh i had that last year yeah yeah <laughs> or at least but, the then, start. but then you start getting good right and then and then you start to see 
oh yeah, I'm actually pretty confident at this. And then it starts to go like this. I actually used to just focus on, I, I didn't know there was like this person studying this outside of what I knew myself. I actually um, um, ignored this part of this idea and focused mostly on this part of the idea where people were at their worst. Because that's usually when people come to me. I don't, I rarely do I have a student that's like super confident, mm-hmm. right? I usually get people when they're like right here. And so I had to find a way to kind of help people understand like what, what is in store for them, which is that there is a point where the, it starts becoming exponential. Mm-hmm. You get it? And you start, yeah, getting, okay. you start getting really good uh, over time. <clears throat> and so, um, but that, that study uh, is great because it also kind of proves a po- another point that I was trying to make to people, which is that you should just always – like basically just assume that you don't know, right? Mm -hmm. Because the whole idea of why people have a harder time to learn at the very beginning and are are heavily confident, even though they're really shitty, you know, is because um, they think they know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right? Like, have you ever been in a conversation with somebody and they're talking about something that, let's say, you're, you're a little bit more knowledgeable about? Right, you feel like you know a little bit more than they do, like you actually do know more about it. And they're going on and on and on about like all this stuff and you're just kind of like, how can they, why are they like going hard on this? They like, they're so wrong, you know? Mm-hmm. Like that's that effect that's happening, right? Like the more you aren't good at something, the more your brain's like, no, we're good, we're good. <laughs> and so my point is, is that, um, if if you have this mentality, which I I've not always had myself, I've learned to have this, and ever since I've I've changed my mentality about skill, uh, I I feel like I can learn anything, right? Like you you've seen, I've been able to make video games, and people are like, "What the?" You know, and it's not because I'm talented; it's because I understand this one simple principle: I assume I don't know shit. You understand? Yeah. And because I don't know anything, then that means I have to learn things. And because I have to learn things, I have to constantly ask questions. So like in, um, when I was first was learning programming, I was using uh, play canvas and, Oh, there's someone, uh, Oh, they resolved a question that I had. But was, what I loved about this is that you can go, I think you can go, I forget actually how to get to latest. No, that's not where it is. There's a way that you can look at your own. Oh, here we go. So you can see like I was like active on the forums because I was just like, hey, how do you do this? How does this thing work? Dude, yeah. Like what the hell is this about? Like like I was there, dude, you know? You're not a four-year-old when you discover questions. Is yeah, I, I'm asking, dude, all the time. And I started doing that with the, the new software that I'm using, but the software is just so much better, and I'm already much more educated on coding, so I'm asking fewer questions. But I'm on the forums there, too. You know, and it's going to take a while to load up. And I'm asking questions, dude. You know, I'm asking. Um, tons of questions. Okay, so if we go to my... Uh, my construct builder, you'll see that I have like some stuff here, but then I have test projects. These are all just things where I'm just trying to test things out. You know, I'm not necessarily trying to make a game or anything. I'm just like, how can I, how does this work? And I built an environment where I can break stuff and it's fine. You know, like it's okay if it breaks. This is, does this make sense to you? It does, yes. Yeah, and so okay. I'm not immune to being bad as I'm trying to get at. Like I'm just as, like just like you guys you know the only difference is that i've grown to understand that all all it requires is just some patience and some practice you know and 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 i'm really good at articulating that and that's why people you know watch my video tutorials uh take my classes right Mm -hmm. but that's because i i really stress test a lot of what i don't know you know, and so I, re- I really can answer almost all kinds of questions in most circumstances because I've asked them myself and I found some sort of answer. You know? Yeah. 
And so, so if you're like, if you're saying to yourself, man, like I can't draw characters in perspective. It's always a challenge. I always fall into this trap. Ask yourself the simple question. Have you tr genuinely tried to understand it? Okay, I'd say I'd answer that by saying partially. <laughs> yeah. Had my no, see, you've already. It's not my, it's not already, my favorite you've, thing. I will be honest with you. It wasn't my favorite. You've thing. already failed the test. Yeah. You should say, I no, so. I haven't. Until you can replicate it consistently and constantly, just mm. say no, you don't. Yeah, like okay. maybe you did practice like one or two hours here and there, but that doesn't count. Like I, I wouldn't consider myself a Olympic athlete if I just threw the shot put five times, right? I wouldn't say, oh yeah, I partially practiced. No, I would just say, no, nah, I'm not. I haven't genuinely tried to practice this, you know? And so you, you, it's not your favorite because you're not good at it. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I don't take people's opinions about whether they like something or not seriously, unless they've actually done it really, really well. Like if you are an amazing artist and you decided I don't like to paint, then I would be like, oh, okay, I believe you, <laughs> you know, like I don't like to paint vehicles, but you're like the best vehicle painter in the, in the industry. Does it make mm -hmm. sense? Then like your, your opinion is like, is a lot easier to take seriously. But if you've like only painted vehicles twice and you know, I don't like vehicles and it's like, well, I don't know, maybe you don't like them because you're bad at them. Okay. Yeah. Because sometimes when you get good, then you start to love it. Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, you didn't know how much you love vehicles. Vehicles is your favorite. <laughs> right. Yep, um, and so until you've really tried it, like for instance, I've really tried environments from time and time again, and I've done it professionally in some cases. I just don't like painting environments. Not because I don't like environments. I love looking at great environment art, right? Uh, I just, when it comes down to it, I like to paint characters, right? And so then I started making um, board games, and I, I, I did that for a little bit. But then I realized that I just like making video games. The only reason why I wasn't making video games was because I didn't know how to do programming. I wanted to make games of some sort. I like games. And so I was like, you know what I'm going to do instead? I'm just going to learn how to program. You know? That's the solution to this problem, is not to run away from it, but to actually try to figure it out. So like other people know how to program. I can figure it out. You know? Yep. Right, yeah. And so... Uh, if you, if you, yeah, if perspective is really challenging for you and you really dislike doing it. Remember what I said earlier, there's uh, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of other people that feel the same way and they don't do yep. anything. So yep. the fact that you just do it literally puts you leaps and bounds ahead of a lot of other people. It's it's pretty straightforward. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. Well, yeah, you just, be doing that this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> you just, you just got to do it, man. Like it's, yep. it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there is no way to make it feel better other than to change your perspective mm. to say look this is just me eating my art vegetables you know my artistic health is going to be really good yeah okay and so um and then when you start to get really good at perspective and you become a perspective king people are going to be like how did you do that and then you're going to know the secret that i've known <laughs> for many years which is you, you were just really adamant about being good at it. That's all. Um, but there are some tricks though. Now, now that I've given you kind of like a more like grandstand point of view of this. I feel, um, I feel better. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm going to give you kind of some, some tools. Uh, one thing is just like, yeah, just drawing perspective grid, grids without ru a ruler or using the straight, mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah, yeah. and then trying to draw cubes within this perspective grid. Mm -hmm without drawing it to the vanishing point and then correcting it, like correcting it once you've created that vanishing point, see where, how far off you were, mm -hmm. you know, like try to freehand perspective a lot and then correct it with like a proper perspective grid. Okay. You know, um, cause it's like straight up just drawing a perfect perspective grid is, is not useful anyway. Like you want to have that, uh, like offhand knowledge. Mm, okay. So you want to practice that and then using the tools there, there's some really cool perspective tools that are available too, you know, that you can throw in to check your perspective. Um, 
but the idea is like yeah just try to draw in perspective and then correct later with you know rulers and what have you but when you're first starting out just draw everything freehand so that way you can get better freehand all right okay well all right. All right, thanks cool. thank you very much yeah, dude. of course yeah what's up vanessa Sorry, I passed out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, right. I have that effect on people. No, I just I was up all night. Yeah. So what's up? Yeah, just curious. Um, since I passed out, <laughs> I just wanted to quickly had the assignment going. Oh yeah, yeah. Just to give you quick notes on that. I, I wrote it in the chat too, so you can see. But yeah, so just you're, to do more iterations. Yeah. So you you have that one iteration to so just do three more of them. So then you have four total. And then uh, you'll be good to go. But I was saying that your iteration actually was really good. You did a good job. They were pretty, they're perfect. The only issue that I had was that uh, the snake. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't get to iterate the snake. But, um, yeah, the snake, I think he needs some more um, work on him um, to be iterated as well. So there's iterations on both the snake and on the the character so the character was fine but then the snake he didn't have any love so uh make changes to that and then you'll be good but that's pretty much it like you uh, i was going through the critiques relatively quickly okay. so yeah um did you see the i did the um demon level up or oh i didn't see that at all no i only got one image yeah let yeah, me I, I had to resubmit the other one before this was the wrong version <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it seems it seems like uh, you're on the right track. So let me let me see if it's in the. It might be, and if it is, isn't. Yep, as you suggested. Yeah. This one right here. Oh uh, no. Um, okay, well then that's all I got. <laughs> yeah, like you you may have accidentally submitted the other drawing twice. Because I had two versions of the same I design. Did, but I, I did that like way before class started because like, oh wait, I submitted the wrong one. And then, so uh, that's why there's two of those in there, but, oh shit. <laughs> it's okay. I trust that it's, it's reasonable. What I want you to do though is move on and start making um, those iterations. Sorry, that's fine. Um, and start making some baddies iterations you know uh and so we can move forward and start to get some um progress so we can start moving to final but if you can submit the dragon thingy um into the skype and i'll take a look at it real quick just let me know when it's there okay but yeah sorry about the upload issues But anyway, take on more questions while we wait for Vanessa's upload. Any other questions? Everybody? Go for it, Jacob. Uh, hey, yeah, so. Oh, what the? Jacob, you cut out. J Jacob? As you're about to ask, it's like, yeah, and so this is the most important question I have to ask it. And then you just got out. Hello? Can anyone else hear me? Yeah? Did he cut out or am I wrong? Can anyone else hear him? He cut out, right? Changing the scale? What do you mean, changing the scale? Like adding like small details? Yeah, your mic just destroyed itself or something. You got too excited and it just decided to die.
make it Godzilla size? Yeah, it's already too late. I would have, I would have made some changes much sooner. <laughs> but if I were to, to try to retrofit this way um, to that, what I'll do is basically um, I would like get rid of all these like armors and stuff and just change it. I would bring things much closer to each other. Like these lines would be much smaller, but I would like add like little super tiny little railings, you know, and then maybe have people standing on them. And this face is just, it's just too big too. Like the details are just too big, but stuff like that, like you'd have to add like a lot of things, but there's, there's too many things that it would be, I would have to redraw this entirely. Um, like I want to keep the same principal idea of the character, but then like making Godzilla size. Maybe next next time I'll do a Godzilla size character, and then you guys can see what I'm talking about. So when I redid my characters after studying, I'm finding it hard, really hard to vary the designs a lot. They seem pretty tame. Any advice on iterating and really leveling up the designs? So you know, those the level up process that I give to students. Right, like that's that's a really good um, method, right? Because it like forces you to do do it, right? That's part of the assignment or challenge. But then also, um, what I would say is a really good strategy to improving your um, your uh, ability to iterate is that you have to look at reference and study reference that has nothing to do with the kind of tame stuff that you're referencing a lot of. Because if you reference a lot of tame artwork, you know, then your artwork's going to be tame. Like, you only output what you input, right? So if you're only looking at a really simple and very obvious and any tamed imagery, then expect your imagery to be tamed and obvious and simple. Kid sounds like he's dying. But hopefully that answers your question. Got 10 more minutes, y'all. Yeah, I realize I haven't painted something like a character or anything in a while. I've just been coding. I've been knee deep in that code in business, learning 3D too. Getting pretty competent at low poly 3D character modeling. I love it, dude. I love painting like really low low poly stuff i'm actually falling in love with pixar too like doing a little lo-fi pixar animation it's a lot of fun the pros of working in this industry are plentiful um you can get paid pretty well if you learn to negotiate well um if you just become good too and just make sure that you get paid um uh, another thing, a really good pro is you work on movies and stuff, right? Like you get to work on movies and video games and that's always, that's just really cool. And it, it impresses people too. And so you feel very fulfilled in, in a lot of ways. Uh, unless you're entitled, then you might not fulfill. You feel like you need more. <laughs> but uh, I don't think anyone here is like that. Um, I had a student that was entitled and I told him straight up. I was like, you're entitled. That's why you can't progress. You keep thinking you deserve all this amazingness, but you don't deserve anything. You need to earn it, dude. He's like, but it's hard. Like, why is people just give me jobs? Like, cause it doesn't work that way. Nobody owes you a job. You have to earn it just like everyone else. If you just happen to have a lot of bad luck, you know, it's no, no one else's fault. No one to blame. You just gotta find ways to work around it. But you know, um, Working freelance is, is nice, but it's not stable. Um, some people can make it stable. I, I make it, it's really hard for me to, to keep it stable. That's why I like my stability is actually my school and my tutorials. Um, but freelance is you know helpful and like, it helps me maintain some structure of income continuously.
but um, right now I'm trying to build another stable uh, structure of income through building games. I want to make a lot of games and eventually they're going to be good. I built uh, a website for myself um, for the, the company that me and my buddy are going to, or like at least the platform that we're trying to build, which is we're building a platform called Gamer Coffee. And uh, the idea is that we're making these really cheap, inexpensive games um, that either you can, you know, help support us buy one of our games or, you know, buy some coffee. You know, the age old conundrum that all of us people struggle with on a day by day basis. Should I buy a game today or should I play? Or should I buy a game or should I play some coffee? <laughs> play some coffee. Um, you guys want to see what I got? Let's see. Wait. No, it's not there. It's in the main projects. I'll send you guys a link to it right now. Test it out. There's some music, so be prepared. Can I ask another one? Yeah, while well, you guys are enjoying the website. And I'll talk I'll talk over it right now. But um yeah, you know the the art industry is really good and there's a lot of really good um there's a lot of good people, a lot of friendly people, a lot of amazing things out there. It's really it's really uh amazing, you know? And I think the cons are that, um, I mean, it's a pro and a con, but like the industry isn't that big. So like if you say and do things, people find out, you know, it's pretty crazy. And so uh, if you just be a cool person in general, rarely will you run into any issues. But check this out. You know, like get rid of this. So if you, whether, whatever you guys were enjoying, it's gone. Um, I'm just going to tell you, talk to you guys about it. So the idea is that, um, <laughs> so the idea is that like the website would just be like a, this, this image of a game or copy, and then you just, you can pick one or the other, right? Uh, the games on a, right now it's temporary. It takes me to my game page, but I'm going to eventually have it take it to like some sort of, um, splash page that where you can choose all the games that we've made and you can purchase them or whatever. But I have it like there's some music. So when you click on this, I don't know if you guys can hear that. But then <laughs> everything starts to dance and there's like music and it's fun. And then when you click on the coffee, I'm gonna have it where you can see me and my friend where like, when you don't have the music playing, it's just us working. We're just like working on games. But then when you, um, click the music, then we're like standing up, dancing around and stuff like that. And then what will end up happening is that when you click on the coffee, you're actually playing another game. Like you click on this and it'll be one of those click hero type games. Idle game is the genre where you just click and you just progress. There's no, there's some subtle strategy but it, it initially was just kind of a spoof of this idea of grinding and just leveling up and saying that this is meaningless and just keep doing one thing over and over again and they just brought it to the most bare bare bones version of that like just clicking a thing and then it just makes everything work and i was going to make an idle game that does that simulates all that and it's just it's just going to be funny and then um but it's a game <laughs> so you're still playing a game and it's free but it's just part of our website uh and then uh when you click on the the game part you get to yeah play our games or buy our games whatever we'll have and over the time i'll see you later 
over time it's going to be um it's going to be better so i'm building it out i'm actually building it in the game engine our website which will be good because then it's like if you can't even run our website then you probably won't be able to play a lot of our games Anyways, what was the other question? They could take one more question before I have to get going. Uh, do you have any tips on or habits you have to be more productive, more focused, and not burn out, basically? Yeah, so the burnout one is just don't work too hard, right? <laughs> and so the, the way that I go about that is uh, there's a minimum amount of work that you can put into a day that's effective. Like if you put, um, you know, uh, three hours a day, every day, that's one hour in the morning, one hour at night, one hour in the middle of the day, that's the minimum. I think you can really get away with, with work. The maximum, I think maybe five or six hours is really healthy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, but obviously people spend way more time than that. Um, and it, it's, sometimes you lose track of time when you're having fun, right? I get that. But. Yeah. And when you have a, a customer well, yeah. no, a project, when you must just put out a lot of art, yeah. and it's just, what do you do then? Yeah, and so you just gotta be, you just gotta learn how to be more effective. See, a lot of times I'm spending a lot of my effort when I'm learning this stuff, like learn, like, like I'm talking about the programming stuff, like when I'm learning programming and game design and all that good stuff, I'm spending a lot of my effort to make it so that in five or six years from now, that'll be effortless to make video games. You get it? Mm -hmm. And so I spend a lot of good time in the front end. Um, and so a good habit there is to just really focus a lot. Like pick a thing, Focus on it until you feel like you're getting closer to some expertise and just keep doing that until you, you become an expert or mm -hmm. you, you're becoming one. Right. And then once you've become like, have some competency, you just keep practicing it. you make sure you don't stop. And that's, that's where like the three hours things come in. If you have to work for a client and you have to spend a lot of time, like I said, that's fine. Like that's just, this is how life is. You have to pay the bills, you know? Um, but the, the point I'm trying to make overall, like you, you want to build habits that make you work smarter, not harder. And so another uh, good habit to build is timing yourself often. I had a student who was spending 12 hours a day working on the assignments for my class. And I said, look, and he was doing great. He's kicking ass. And I said, why don't you do this? Why don't you try to do the same amount of work? but in seven or in 10 hours. And he did that and I said, all right, now I'll try to do the same amount of work, but in eight hours. So we kept on shaving two hours away, right? Mm -hmm. And then when I gave him the eight hour challenge, he came back and said, I did this in six. So he was learning how to be more effective. And he learned that uh, he, he needed to turn off all of his devices. He needed to um, like, you know, uh, set a timer, take breaks, you know, mm -hmm. he did this and he was super effective, but before he didn't have that, like, it was like that analogy that I showed with the hang glider. When you have a lot of variables that are, in, it's hard to distinguish what's actually slowing you down. But when you start to focus and pay attention to every little thing, um, it starts to, it starts to become easier to kind of pinpoint the exact problems and then get rid of them, you know, or, or learning how to manage them. Maybe you can't get rid of certain things. Some people have anxiety issues that they just can't get rid of, but you can learn how to manage it, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's all you need to do. And the only way to do that is to just kind of, to practice. I actually have to get going, Nikita. So if it's yeah, a question yeah. that I, I can probably answer, then ask, ask it and I'll tell you if I can. And if I can't, I'll answer it with the first question I ask. Answer it next time. Mine's done. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Have a great day. Yeah. Wait, did you did you have another question? No, no, only this one. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, so we're all good then? I want to add to that. If I stream my art, it also helps with the focus. Yeah. All right.
Peace out. Oh, you playing the games? <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm gonna only get better. Right now, they're still kind of like it's like one-off type stuff. But I have a, I have this really ambitious project that I want to try to work on over the years. But we'll see. Anyway, got to get better first, though. Latest guys, thanks again. Have a great weekend. Talk to you guys real soon. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.